What's going on down here on the sports family? Hey, it's your boy Big Mike Dove. And I know, like I said, it's been a minute since we've been able to talk to you today. But again, I got a special guest and we got a special topic. Special guest, what we got this week? Hey, hey, it's Brayden. And we're gonna talk some UGA football. Go dogs! Sick them. Woof, 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 woof. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my, cha my channel, Bra Cool Awesome Brayden. Hey, my son is seven years old and he's got his own YouTube channel. Check him out. Cool, awesome Braden on YouTube. Some of his fun is. And again, like I said, we keep it in the family. But this week, man, this week we're talking about UGA football. And um, it's been a while. You know, we did a, I did a, I did an episode a couple of weeks ago where we discussed kind of, you know, just the state of UGA uh, sports. You know, we saw Jamie Newman leaving. Um, it left a, an opening at the quarterback position. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, we really need to discuss the state of UGA right now because I think the team will look a, a bit fundamentally different than what we've come we've we've come to get used to for UGA, right? Because let's start with um, we'll start with the offense. I think the defense is a strength for the team this year, but I think offensively, we really kind of need to round the horns a little bit to kind of see before we talk about that controversial quarterback controversy. You know, which is you know, hey, who's going to start here? You know, we thought it was going to be JT Daniels, the hot shot. 6'2", six, 6'3", six, West Coast quarterback, already proven, has started in games for, U, for for USC, and we just thought that he was going to be able to walk in and be handed that quarterback one job after the surprising departure of Jamie Newman. But we were sadly mistaken because there is a guy who I've, I've watched play in the spring game that I think is going to cause quite a bit of havoc when it comes to deciding who's that quarterback one is going to be. And, of course, that's Dewan Mathis. But we're going to talk about Dewan Mathis a little bit later. So I think today... We need to do a couple of things. You know, let's start with those guys on the offensive line. And I'll just go through some of the projected starters and the, and the surprise, right? And I think the, uh, you know, one of the guys, you know, Trey Hill. Trey Hill and Jamari Sawyer are, I would say, probably our two most, uh, two linemen that make me feel the most comfortable in terms of just ability, skill set, those type of things. Trey Hill, our center, um, kind of pretty much everybody almost like almost their unanimous pick for an all-SEC uh, season at, at the center position. Um, look for him to be a stabilizer. I think it's always a good sign of your offensive line when your center is the, uh, is kind of that key orchestrator of your offensive line and everything runs from your center on the offensive line. Now, I do expect Ben Cleveland, who's kind of the elder statesman, it feels like Ben Cleveland has been around forever. Uh, I do expect him to finish off his senior season with a good productive year uh, and loot to the NFL. I think if Ben Cleveland was in the NFL now, this year, he would be on an NFL roster, you know, pretty much no, no, no. No questions asked, right? But again, he's here on our team. And um, I look for him to be able to do great things this year, right? So when we look at, you know, we look at, you got Ben Cleveland on, on one side. On the other side, you got Justin Schaefer. I believe Justin Schaefer played a lot in mop-up duty. And I think that um, he did get in some games last year before he got hurt. And he played exceptionally well. I expected him, actually, once he got back healthy, to be our starter at the left guard position. So, again, good continuity against the offensive, against the offensive line. I think that... Um, the offensive line will be a strength for us this year as we continue to roll great teams um, when it's needed to pound the ball in the passing game. But I think with the addition of a Todd Munkin, we may see a lot more uh, a lot more spread plays, a lot more air raid plays, similar to what he used, um, similar to what he used when he was, um, you know, the the head coach at Southern Miss uh, when he had a Des Bryant back at Oklahoma State. I think those are the guys that those are the systems that I think kind of are telling about what type of guy he is, uh, what type of coach he is, right? He's known as an air raid guru. So having an air raid guru really ties into the next set of position, the, the next position that I kind of want to touch on really quick. And it's the receiver position, I think. Um, you know, you've got, of course, you know, everybody's number one receiver in George Pickens. I expect George Pickens to continue to grow. And I expect George, George Pickens to continue to, like I said, be a force this year, right? But ultimately... Who is it that uh, I expect to really take a step up at the receiver position this year? Because I think that is a position where outside of George Pickens, there are a lot of unknowns. But there are actually a lot of guys I've been hearing out of camp that are actually um, producing at a relatively high level. And that's Kiaris Jackson and Demetrius Robinson. Now, Demetrius Robinson, I would have expected to be the clear cut number two receiver. But I think what we found is, is that Kiaris Jackson is actually outperforming him, not only in, in, in the weight room, but just kind of his approach to the game, his playbook, his knowledge of the playbook, learning a new playbook. Because, you know, that's important as well. It's like, you know, a lot of times the guys that learn the playbook the fastest 
you know, they're going to get on the field the fastest. And I think in a COVID stricken year, it's important that we know that the, the receiver position, that the receiver position is at least stockpiled with decent talent. So I think behind those three, D Rob, you know, your Kiaris Jacksons of the world, your George Pickens of the world, really be on the lookout for a lot of those true freshmen that are, are coming in. Cause I think that they have a chance to come in and contribute because they have receiver body types. Not that we've seen a lot at, at, uh, at UGA. I would say Marcus Rosemey. He is one guy that always stuck out to me. Come from Aquinas out of Fort Lauderdale. Great football program. They're known for producing good players that go on to college and do well. The list goes on and on about players from St. Thomas Aquinas that are in the NFL. So look for him to come in and play more of an Anquan Bolden type role. I really look at his body type, the way he works, the way he blocks. And I think that when George Pickens does finally go that dreaded day when he goes to the NFL, Marcus Rossini will be the guy who picks up his slack just because his body type really is most similar to George Pickens. And I think that he does not drop passes when they come his way. So it's important to know that about Rosemi. So you got a Rosemi and you got that guy that I've really been excited about. One of the guys that we plucked from LSU at the last second and Jermaine Burton. Jermaine Burton is an absolute beast. He can fly, he can play kick return, punt return. He can block. Um, he does a lot of personal training work with Terrence Edwards in the off season. So you know that, um, you know, he he's pretty polished in his route running. Uh, definitely guys like that tell me that they're coachable. I mean, he's played for IMG. He's played in California. He's played for Hateville Charter. So it doesn't matter where he goes and where he plays at. He's an ultra successful receiver. So having him in the same place for three to four years, I think will pay dividends for us. And it'll be a name that most of us in the uh, UGA community will get to know and grow, right? So, you know, again, you got those guys. Um, and I, like I said, I expect good things out of the receiver this year. Uh, tight end position, Trey McKitty is currently hurt. As of today, I think Trey McKitty was going to be our guy that gave us another um, receiving body type that we've not seen probably since maybe an Orson Charles or, um, you know, those type of players just being able to create separation. You know, those guys that are able to, um, you know, like I said, just essentially block well, uh, receiver well. Again, Trey McKitty is another guy that I really feel like had he gone to the NFL draft, he'd make an NFL roster because, you know, he's just... He's that good. So um, Georgia having players that I think could be in the NFL right now that chose to stay, the Richard LeCounts of the world, the um, Eric Stokes of the world, those guys coming back, I think, again, I'm humble about this team because I really feel like the expectation is a national championship. I think all of the moves, bringing the quarterbacks in, is national championship or bust, right? So, um, again, you know, the running back position, again, Zamir White, James Cook, we kind of expect those guys to take the step. I think James Cook can be as good as he wants to be, given the opportunities. I think he will be given the opportunities. And I think as UGA fans, we want to see Cook get the ball more. Zamir White, I expect a decent season out of Zamir White. I think with two ACLs, it's not really, you're never really sure exactly what you're going to get out of Zamir White. But we know from the ball game in which he started that when you get that guy, he gets some momentum, he's hard to take down. And um, again, with the offensive line, and I think with the offense we're running, I was we're running currently with Todd Munkin. I think you'll see Zamir White a lot more in the open field and able to really show his overall versatility as a running back. Now, there are a couple guys. Now, let me touch on his running back position just really quick because Kenny McIntosh, another guy that I think can be as good as he wants to be. I think it's just an embarrassment of riches to talk about the UGA running back room because any of those guys can start for teams in other conferences and definitely some other teams in the SEC, right? But it's, 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 it's those bottom guys that I really think at some point they'll make a play or two. So I want to touch on them now. And again, Kenny McIntosh, uh, Miami, Florida running back, oozes swagger. I think we saw, uh, I'm not even sure who we played. It was a 1AA team, but he made them look like a 1AA team. And as UGA fans, you remember a couple years ago when we lost to uh, Nickel State, or oh, excuse me, almost lost to Nickel State, that just because you're a Division One AA team, if you don't make them look like it, they will make your day long. So again, he made a 1AA team look like a 1AA team. So uh, the other two guys, um, you know, I, I want to touch on are, are Kenny Milton and um, <laughs> Kenny Milton and Dewan Edwards. I almost gave away Dewan Edwards' comparison because I thought of this guy when I thought of who he reminds me of. It. Very short guy, got a lot of ultra productive tape. Played for Conquer County, and that's Dewan Edwards. And again, Dewan Edwards, his game reminds me of a I'm not saying he's Clyde Edwards Elaire good, but again, he reminds me of a little Clyde Edwards Elaire. Can bounce off tackles, good receiving back, can pass block. You will see his name over the years. I know the Kenny McIntoshes, the Kenny Miltons, the those guys get a lot more pub than him. But again, 
you will know the name Dewan Edwards at some point. And I think you may learn his name this year because he might steal a couple carries from a, a couple more of the highly recruited guys, right? So, real quick, touch on the offense really quick. We'll move over here to this defense. And again, I'll touch on the defense really quick because I think that it is a strength. But I think um, there are a couple players I want to highlight and kind of discuss kind of what, uh, and we'll touch on the pass rush at last because I think the pass rush is our greatest strength. I think our ability to get to the quarterback with those guys is going to be our greatest strength. Defensively, um, defensively, like I said, let's go on to secondary. Now, Richard LeCount, Eric Stokes, Tyson Campbell slash DJ Daniel, I mean, great guys. I mean, they, they, they've played a lot of games. I expect them to have this team ready to go every week. They are our leaders in the secondary. I think those teams that win national championships are those teams that are well-led in the secondary. They have good vocal um, recognition of who's in charge. I think you have Dan Lanning being the defense coordinator. is going to be a guy that you really better appreciate a Dan Lanning now because he's not going to be a Georgia Bulldog. I would say in the next couple of years, just because, and that's a good thing, because you, as a head coach, you want your guys to get those opportunities. And if, hey, if the, the bigger schools come knocking for a head coach, I think Dan Lanning is the guy to uh, to lead a program. He's young, and he's got these guys, like I said, hungry to play. So the one guy that I haven't touched on yet in the secondary is Lewis Seen, sophomore. He's actually the guy that I actually like the most because he is the guy that basically – lays the hat. I mean, he sets the tone. He's the guy who basically, um, he's going to be your guy who at the end of the day, uh, when you ask yourself, if there's any guy, and I hate to give comparisons to these guys, but if there's one guy who approaches the game like Sean Taylor, I'm not saying he's Sean Taylor good, but a guy that just, it don't matter who it is. If the punter runs a fake punt and he's got to run into Lewis Seen, it's going to be a long day for the punter. At the end of the day, Lewis Seen is going to set the tone defensively. And I think he's really an upgrade from J.R. Reed in terms of just the overall physicality, overall athleticism, and just being a pure football player. I think as good as J.R. Reed was, his smarts and his brain, I think, allowed him to get in position to make a lot of plays that maybe his athleticism might have limited him from. I don't think that'll be a problem with Lewis Seen. I think he, he loves the game, and he's just athletically blessed to be able to, um, you know, do great things, right? So, um Again, secondary, look for the secondary to be a strength. Inside linebacker, inside linebacker, inside linebacker, um, you know, Nicobe Dean, uh, your Quay Walkers of the world, Monty Rice, again, man, a lot, lot of leadership, a lot of games played. I look for the inside linebackers to continue to make a step with the absence of a, of a Tay Crowder. Uh, and again, don't forget about a Channing Tindall as well. Like, these are guys that, again, I expect to really make their presence felt at, at some uh, point in time. And again, we got to cover a lot of the guys that aren't, we aren't, really highlighting as well because I think in a COVID season you may need everybody you never know who you're going to need any given week let's not um let's not fool ourselves and act like we're not in the middle of a pandemic so at the end of the day you need to know that now touch on the linebackers really quick uh let's touch on these defensive line and the outside linebackers together because I think the defensive line has some guys that again we we're there I mean come on man we keep talking about we keep talking about continuity and we keep talking about strength and I think when you look at a Jordan Davis on the defensive line, uh, true freshman, Jalen Carter. you got your Trayvon Walkers of the world. Um, the defensive line will be a, an additional strength as well. Malik Herring. I mean, these are guys that have played a lot of games. Devontae Wyatt. These are guys that, again, uh, and again, let's not forget about a lot of those freshmen that didn't play a lot last year. You know, your Zion Lowe's, your Bill Norton's, uh, your Tymon Mitchell. These, again, the depth is through the roof. It's going to be up to Coach Scott to get these guys ready to play and put the best defensive line rotation together every week to put us in the best position to win. There's no question about it, right? So, again, you got those guys. Um, now, I think ideally, I would like to see, um, I would like to see a little bit more, uh, you know, in the pass rush department from our defensive line outside of you know Jordan Davis being kind of that huge run stuffer. I would like to see more linemen that are able to pass rush a little bit better. But again. Just picking on the semantics, right? So to tap this thing off, tap this thing off, we've covered a lot of people really quick. We're kind of to the point. I just want you guys to know that, hey, in, a, in about 10 days, we're going to have some UGA football. Probably a little bit less than 10 days, right? Now, last thing I will add to you is our outside linebackers. I waited to these guys last because they are the guys who make me the most excited. Nolan Smith, Jermaine Johnson, Adam Anderson, you know, uh, uh, Robert Beal, um, you know, and, and again, uh, Mikhail Sherman, you know, the, the, the true freshman. A lot of these outside linebackers can start anywhere else, but they chose to come to UGA. 
So we've got starter after starter after starter after starter on UGA's, uh, you know, on UGA's defensive line and outside linebacker room. So those competitions, I'm sure, are, are highly competitive when it comes down to um, who does what. But again, I have a lot of faith in these Georgia Bulldogs this year. The mentality this year is championship or bust. That is all. Now, with that note, I'm not going to take too much time. I'm not going to do no closing thoughts. The closing thoughts are, let's win the ship. Kirby is our guy. Put up or shut up. We've had a lot more drama than we're used to. We wanted Mark Rick gone. But guess what? With Mark Rick being gone, we got the new guy. We got the home fed guy. But I ain't going to lie. The home fed guy, the Kirby, the Kirby Smart, who is a, who is a UGA alumni, probably comes with a little bit more drama that is more synonymous with the Alabamas and the LSUs. But if we're being mentioned in the same sentence as those teams, we must now get what they have that we don't, which is a championship. On that note, like I said, we're going to leave y'all. It's down here on the sports. It's your boy, Big Mike Dub, special guest, Cool Awesome Brayden. Follow his YouTube channel at Cool Awesome Brayden. At the end of the day, go dogs, sick them, and we out.